hug it up tight, right? We spend a lot of time learning how to secure the bag. That's making sure that we have money saved up for a rainy day. But how many of us have checked to ensure that our bag is actually secure, especially since so many of us do business online? I'm Khalila Reynolds, and it's time for another episode of Money Mondays JA. Money Mondays JA is brought to you by Proven Wealth. Visit provenwealth.com to speak to an investment advisor today and follow We Are Proven on social media. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, and turn on those post notifications. Also subscribe to our newsletter by clicking the link up here or in the description box below. You'll get access to a transcript of this episode so that you can read at your leisure and really digest the information. So last year, it seemed like every time you scroll through social media, somebody was talking about securing a bag. For the older heads, that means making money. (laughs) Hi, mom. (laughs) But making money is only one step in ensuring wealth. You also have to learn how to protect your money. Super important, right? Well, financial institutions have made things a lot easier in recent years by creating apps and websites that allow customers to do transactions quickly and conveniently online. But apps and websites can also make it very easy for unscrupulous persons to gain access to our hard-earned dollars. Well, in this episode, I'm going to give you guys a few tips to ensure that your bag stays secure. Tip number one, always use different passwords for your account. Sounds simple, right? But trust me, I know it's tempting to use one password for all your accounts. After all, some of us are juggling multiple bank accounts, investment accounts, email addresses, Amazon Prime, Netflix, and a bunch of other stuff. It's just easier to remember if we use the same password for everything, less complicated. True, it may be easier, but at what risk? Dum, dum, dum. Using the same password for multiple accounts makes it much easier for a hacker to get into your accounts because if they figure it out once, that's it. Game over. So try using various passwords for your accounts. Also, please don't use passwords like password123 or your birthday or something that a hacker is bound to try first. Make them complicated. Use a combination of lower and uppercase letters, numbers, and symbols. But Kalila, trying to remember 10 different complicated passwords is impossible. Okay, I hear you. And the last thing I'd want is for you guys to experience the fate of German-born programmer Stefan Thomas, who forgot the password to his Bitcoin wallet that was worth around 220 million US dollars in January. Ouch! So I'd recommend a virtual private network or VPN. Among other things, a VPN can provide a secure vault to store your passwords. It creates a protected network connection when using public networks. This encrypts your system, making it harder for hackers to access your computer or phone. Most VPNs also include some kind of password vault or manager where you can save your passwords instead of writing them down on a million different pieces of paper or trying to remember them all. So if you choose not to use the password vault option, the good news is, like I mentioned before, VPNs encrypt your network. So for those of us who usually just have Google or cell phones, remember our passwords for us so he can sign in quickly. A VPN can help keep your connection secure and by extension, your passwords. Well, there are some free options for VPNs, but to get full access to all of their benefits, you'll most likely have to pay for a yearly subscription. But the peace of mind will pay for itself. Uh huh. Tip number three is to set up multi-factor authentication for every account that you can and on your devices, whether it's a two-step or three-step authentication. This is a really good way to make sure that no one is getting in your accounts and spending your money but you. Or if someone is trying to get into your account, you are alerted pretty quickly. So check with your bank to see what options they have for two-step authorization uh, process. 
Sometimes banks will send you an email asking you to confirm a transaction or just letting you know if one has been initiated. So that's a good option to have. Multi-step authentication on your devices is also a good idea in case they get stolen or lost. So face ID or fingerprint ID in addition to a good password or getting email confirmation. Whatever combination works best for you. Now the last thing that you'd want is for someone to gain access to your phone and bypass a single layer of protection and get access to your info just like that, right? Mm -mm, not about to happen. I mean, if we go through the trouble to make sure our Instagram and Twitter pages are secure, why not our bank and investment accounts? As a matter of fact, if social media is your business, like it is for me, you definitely want to make sure that it's secure because if you get locked out of your IG account and lose the thousands of followers that you painstakingly built for your online store, then that can be like financial murder. Now this one might be a bit controversial, but stay away from public Wi-Fi. Yup, I know it's super convenient to log on to the Wi-Fi while you're eating at a restaurant. Co-working spaces and working from cafes have also become popular in the last couple of years, but public Wi-Fi is never completely safe. Anyone can access the network, making it easy for a hacker to slip on and hack into other devices connected to that network. It's something to consider if you're handling your finances on the devices that you're connecting to on these public spots. And it really doesn't matter if you're checking into your accounts while connected to public Wi-Fi. Once a hacker has access to your systems, they can go anywhere and do anything. Again, having a VPN will help with this because it creates a secure connection while you're connected to a public network. Now, my final tip is to make sure that you're checking your accounts regularly for any anomalies. Make sure you know or at least have an idea of where every penny went. I'm a little bit obsessive about this. I like to check my accounts multiple times a day. I don't know, I just like to, to have my eyes on my money and be sure that it's still there. <laughs> it gives me that reassurance. It might get a little tedious trying to remember where or why you spent $2,000 here or $3,000 there, but you can use a budgeting app to keep track of your transactions and then compare them against your bank statement or your recent transactions. And this may be one of the easiest and earliest ways to pick up if your accounts have been compromised. Like I said, some banks may send you a notification to let you know when a withdrawal or a transfer has been made, but some might not. And if someone has gained access to your account, then you really might not get any notifications at all. Some honorable mentions include, of course, not sending your banking info through email or over text as well as not using point of sale machines at questionable locations. Also, banks will never ask you to send certain info to them through email or over the phone. And make sure that you don't leave your bank cards lying around where someone could snatch it or even take a picture of it. So we all work hard for our money. And as unfair as it is, it's some people's job to take that away from us. Following these tips can make it harder for them to do so. Well, that's it for this episode of Money Mondays JA. Now here's what's coming up on Taking Stock. Remember this? I understand that you're actually not using blockchain technology. Why is that? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, blockchain technology has some very interesting features, uh, but it is quite rudimentary. It, it uses a relatively uh, a vulnerable uh, security mechanism uh, for cryptography. Uh, it is necessary but not sufficient. That was the boss of eCurrency, the company developing Jamaica's new digital currency, in an exclusive interview on taking stock. Well, the Caribbean blockchain alliance is clapping back. They say, They'll join us on a live episode of Taking Stock. And the analysts weigh in on the latest market developments. The Bank of Jamaica has signaled that it could raise interest rates at the end of September. How will this potentially impact investors? With Sinker's Q4 results are out, how did they do? 
and it's an IPO alert. Jamaica Fiberglass Products and Spur Tree Spices are both planning IPOs for November to raise funds for expansion. We'll discuss. This and more on Taking Stock, the Caribbean's number one business show. With me, Kalila Reynolds, three-time business journalist of the year. Catch new episodes of Taking Stock every Tuesday at 8 p.m. on YouTube, KalilaReynolds.com, and all your favorite podcast platforms. Let's get this money. Now don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and sign up for my newsletter at kalilareynolds.com slash newsletter where you can read a transcript of this episode. You can click the link in the description box below. Also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Kalila Ray, and Facebook at Kalila Reynolds Media. If you're into podcasts, find us on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Let's get this money. Money Monday's JA was brought to you by Proven Wealth. Visit provenwealth.com to speak to an investment advisor today and follow We Are Proven on social media.